I think we need to forget New Year's resolution. And it's something that has been stirring upon my heart because I think a lot of people struggle in the beginning of the new year when it comes to building their their goals and wanting to accomplish and reflecting. And I have some thoughts on it because I think New Year's resolutions are trash. <laughs> and I don't think you need to set them as a CEO for your business or even within your life. Because to be honest, it's not something that is going to help you. It's only going to disappoint you. And I have different thoughts on what we can do instead. So that way you feel more accomplished by the end of the year to live a more fulfilling life, not just as a business owner, but it could be a mom, it could be a dad, an aunt, uncle, sister, daughter, son, whatever it is that you hold truth about yourself. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm just tired of the New Year's resolution gimmick that comes around the new year. And somebody got to talk about it. So let's talk about it just together. Hey, everyone. My name is Justine Jordan, and I help CEOs just like you create a simplified way to serve your champagne clients in a way of providing high quality value for thousands of people. So if this sounds like something you love and want to do, feel free to join the community by either hitting the subscribe button below and um, let's really dive into what we can do with this new year. Because let me tell you, I got a lot to say <laughs> and it ain't going to be friendly. So if you got kids, if you got family, if you got young ones in the room, I would say put your headphones in <laughs> and create space to hear me out. Because a lot of the materials that we see about New Year's is not something that serves. And I want to serve you in the most optimized way that really benefits you long term. So let's begin. For those of you who are watching in the new year, happy new year to you and your family. I hope you had an amazing previous year. And this is usually the time of year where everyone really is intentional with changing themselves and really reflecting on what they did for the previous year. And I challenge that because a lot of people will make resolutions for this year. And to me, it's not really something that is going to change who you are, because resolutions are made for failing, for to fail you. And I'm not sitting here saying that anybody who promotes resolutions is a bad person, right? I think a lot of people misunderstand the point of resolutions and why, how we believe that one day out of the year where we transition from one year to the next is going to completely change who we are. When in actuality, that's false. This is why I say forget New Year's resolutions because it doesn't take one day to change who you are. But we put that into motion when it comes to putting out our goals and wanting to be something that we really aren't designed to be because we think this is what society wants us. This is, you know, the glitz and glam of the lifestyle of a CEO or the health fitness where you're basically looking a certain way, the beauty industry. Oh, I'm going to take care of myself. That are all these things, right? That are reset goals and intentions for the new year. But how many of us actually achieve it? Right. And so I want to bring a real transparent conversation to this content because I need for everybody to understand it takes more than just setting a goal and working towards it to truly change who you are. So instead of doing resolutions, right, let's come up with intentions for the year. Now, before we get to that point of view, because I will say this, that I am the true believer of that resolutions don't work, right? I have been trying to lose weight for the past 10 years. And why haven't I been able to do so? Right now, this may not have anything to do with business, but I think taking care of your body as a CEO is important. So stick with me on this. For 10 years, you know, I used to be very athletic. I've played basketball since I was nine years old, all the way up until my senior year of high school. Got to college. The freshman 15 is a very real thing. <laughs> and it just kept packing on. As your body changes every seven years, your metabolism slows down. And doing something that you used to do when you were 18 years old versus really say, for instance, in your 30s, is going to have different effects to your body. So we put on this goal of like, oh, I'm going to lose 50 pounds, or I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, 
when in actuality, what are the steps that we taking to truly embody that change, right? Because it's not about losing weight or making more money. It's about who we become when trying to achieve those goals. And a lot of us don't realize that when we set the goals in place and we don't hit them, we are more depressed and disappointed in ourselves than ever before. Who would want that? <laughs> not me. And you shouldn't either. Okay, plus I want to talk about New Year's resolutions as something that is 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 it's it's just an energy, right? It's an energy of what's to come. It's something new, it's something like refreshing, right? But what about the dark side of going into the new year, right? I told you I used to try and lose 10 pounds or not even maybe 50 pounds by now, and it never worked, right? So every year into the new year. I'm beating myself up for not accomplishing that goal. And we have to truly understand what the dark side is going into the new year. And we need to make room and space for people who go through stuff like this, who who are beating themselves up because they didn't accomplish the goals that they set, right? And to be honest, it's not your fault. <laughs> we're We're programmed to believe that we can truly change our behavior within one just because a calendar year. When in actuality, it takes way more of understanding who you are internally and then changing that first before you actually even obtain the goal, right? Another thing about New Year's resolution is that, and this is going to go real deep, real dark, okay? And I'm just I'm just at the point where it's just like, I want to bring something different to the table and I want to have a place where people feel seen. And if you are a person, right, who lost someone in the previous year, Right. As we get older, as we continue to grow into our human experience, we experience death. We lose the people that we love. We lose the fact that we will no longer do life with them in the physical world. And we have to cope with that. Regardless if you lost the person in the beginning of the year or to the end. These are the things that are coming in on the new year. When it comes down, we need, can we make space for people like that? Can we make space for people who've lost their loved ones in the past year and still have to overcome the reality to know that they will never see them in the physical world, right? This upcoming year. So when you're trying to be in that new year's resolution and you're coping with the loss of a loved one, we have to be understanding that it's okay not to make a goal as you're processing your own grief, Right. You shouldn't have to make a goal of especially if you're a business owner, like or you're trying to transition to a different lifestyle. Like if you you have to deal and process your own feelings and thoughts. And just because a new year starts doesn't mean you have to all of a sudden move forward or move past that and avoid the feeling of going through grief, which, by the way, is an up and down roller coaster throughout the entire year as you're grieving. So we need to hold space for those type of people because all of us are going to experience it. All of us have experienced it, probably one point in the time, whether it affected you or not, right? Another thing, a dark side of making New Year's resolutions is can we hold a moment for people who didn't accomplish any of the goals? Last year, due to setbacks or challenges, on the coaching side, my clients go through hell and back, right? They go through some traumatizing experiences and we have to work through that together in order to get to their financial or business goals. But we can't move forward unless we address the life experience sometimes because it's affecting the demeanor of the CEO to make decisions to progress the business forward. And so I want to hold moments in time, right? And give grace where people didn't accomplish what they set out to be because of external factors or things that they had to overcome. Their mindset is overtaking their decisions. These are the things that we really have to understand that people can't always accomplish the things that they set out for. And we beat ourselves up. We overthink, we avoid, we suppress because it's a new year. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. No, absolutely not. Okay. Another thing, another dark side to making New Year's resolutions is like, can we just pause time for people who see that all these positive words and oh my gosh, new me, new new year, new me and 2020, whatever is going to be the best year ever. I'm going to be so intense. Cut the shit out. Like to be honest, cut it out. Right. Because what we see in 20. 20- in, in, in any positive aspect 
of the year. We don't know how to attain that, but we're going to strive to get it, right? New year, new me, new year, new business, new year, new goals, new year, new intentions. How about we just cut the crap and just change, just create change within ourselves. Just be a better version of you. Right. I love how the new year brings new energy. That's exactly what it is to me. It's just new energy. It's just very it's a it's a start. Again, we're back where we left off or we're in a different time space at the same time on the calendar year. And to be honest, I will never dim anybody's light. I will never dim anybody's light who thrives on New Year's resolutions. In fact, I know a lot of people who accomplish a lot of goals doing New Year's resolutions. And I will never sit here and attack those people. Never. I actually praise them, right? Call it cliche that you made it to the end of the year with your goal accomplished. Good freaking for you, right? I am your biggest cheerleader. What I don't like is the energy that is exchanged for the people who don't accomplish the goals and how we can become over analytical of the decisions that we're making and beat ourselves up on not wanting to make the mistakes again going into the new year. Hello, I'm one of those people. Every single year, we go into, you know, the happy new year. But that new year, that new month, that January 1st that we come to every single year is the start of a new year and the birthday month of for me, right? So I'm going through a double reflection as we progress forward. It starts in December because I know the new year is coming. And I start going into a, a, a deep reflection of what the year has been and what have I accomplished. What ends up happening though, is just that I start to overanalyze. I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Right. And then I go into January turning into a new birth year. And so now I'm hit double times when it comes down to the resolution energy. Right. So I'm really diving into now more personally where I want to be as I get older. And a lot of the things that I wanted to accomplish by the time I was that age, it, I didn't accomplish. And sometimes it rolls over into years. Right. These are the things that I want to hold space because I know it's a great thing to set goals. I'm a person in my coaching world. I'm the type of coach I need to know your goals in order to help you, right? What are, where, where's the direction of the pathway? And sometimes we don't know and we'll figure it out, but at least we have some intention behind the goal, right? And it's not even about, again, not taking away from people who enjoy the new year energy but I want to hold space for those of you who beat yourself up as we enter the new year I want to hold time and, and pause it real quick while those of you who are maybe coping or having setbacks or challenges and or though you trying to accomplish the goals again but already are feeling the experiences of possibly getting sick or death in a family or some hiccup financial crisis hardship right or something came up with your kids and whatever comes up, right? We have to understand that when it comes down to the decisions that we make for ourselves, let's take the pressure off of accomplishing the goal. One of my mentors, she was such a big inspiration for me towards the end of last year was she said, why don't you take the emotional detachment from the outcome, right? Instead of saying, oh, it won't work or I've tried it before, just don't have no emotions to what comes about. Meaning, if you accomplish the goal, great, still have no emotion attached to it. If you don't accomplish a goal, great, still have no emotional att attachment to it. And simple, right? Duh. <laughs> why wouldn't I think of that myself? Well, this is probably why you should be getting a mentor. Because sometimes the most simple advice is the life-changing decision it takes for you to make waves into who you are and where your business goes. And I will attest to that. That advice was given me in sometime in, I want to say November, maybe October. And for the next two months, all of a sudden, my entire coaching program got filled because I detached from the outcome. And I said, okay, if I don't hit my marker, that's okay, right? On to the next month, on to the next month. And it, it was wild to me. 
So, and so I bring that, bring that knowledge and I bring that recommendation to all of my clientele. And I want to bring it front facing into YouTube because I think this is something that everybody needs to do when it comes down to the decisions that you make within your life and your business. Stop making it about you. If you don't accomplish your goals, if you don't accomplish the things that you set out to do, that is okay right? That is okay. It's okay if you don't meet that revenue goal for the month. It's okay if you don't get to, you know, get the clientele that you thought you wanted to work with. These are the things that you have to be okay with. And knowing and trusting and enjoying the process and journey of it is part of that energy, right? Truly detaching from yourself when it comes to what do you let go of despite the outcome. It's almost like having faith, having faith and trusting something will come, but you just don't care when it does. Ooh, <laughs> somebody give me a, somebody quote me on that. <laughs> I love the new year. I love the new year and what it brings. I love the energy. I love the refreshing um, feeling that it gives you, right? But don't make it about you right? Be refreshed, be reflective. But instead, this is what I do for my new years. Every new year, I have a theme um, for the entire year. And within every month, quarter, day, week, moment, I try to live up to that theme. So this year's theme, last year, let's talk about last year. Last year's theme for me was all about being present, and so everything that I tried to do and strive for, I was truly trying to be present. And I felt accomplished by the end of the year because even towards the end, towards the holiday season, I completely forgot to take videos and pictures because I was so in the moment. I was so glued to what was currently going on. I even forgot to bring my phone and capture that moment in time and something I love to do. But that being present is now going to be a foundational piece for this new year. Now, another intention or another theme for this new year is letting go. Letting go of things that no longer serve where I want to go or who I want to be. And it's a slow process and it will take time. But if I can wake up every day and just be intentional of like, what can I let go of today? Oh, this is something I'm stressed about and I need to just let God do its work or have faith or not overanalyze or not have all the answers or not be perfect, right? This is why even on, even on my channel, I've been struggling to create content because I don't know the direction where I want to go, but I feel so called to make this one video. So I'm enjoying the process of doing so. And I want to deliver more podcast style videos for you guys because I want to bring my authentic self here. I love being all smiley, cheerfully and bubbly, but there's a darker side to me. And I want to, because that's the transparency of who I am. I'm not just the person who always smiles and enjoys themselves. Sometimes life sucks <laughs> and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer either, but I want to be a truth teller. Right. So this year on my channel, um, I'm even wanting to start a podcast. So if you're listening to this, maybe eventually there will be some links or I will let you know when the podcast is released. But right now it's just about telling the truth and being real with the people that are watching this. Right. Caring about the viewer versus the views. And I want to mimic exactly what I want my clients and all of my audience of people who resonate with my words to be. Right. And in order to do that, I have to step into being more authentically me when it comes to sharing what I want to share on this channel. So if you want to be a part of that journey, and I totally understand if you don't, but this is a different style that I'm going and evolving into. And it's who I want to become because I want to serve people from my authentic self. I want to serve people who are ready to just step into who you were designed to be, right? So New Year's resolution, how do you even accomplish that? I will tell you, here's the real secret, right? Write this tip down, put it in your post-it note, put it on your mirror, and always remember this tip because this tip was going to change your life, okay? The tip to really accomplishing the goal, the tip to really achieving the resolutions that you have for yourself, for your business, is to embody the person who achieves it. That is the secret to all goals. It could be the secret to fitness. It could be the secret to running a business. It could be the secret to being a really good friend, a mom, a dad, whatever, 
right? Let's be very clear. You have to embody the person of who that person is when it comes down to it. So let's talk about marriage just for a quick second. When I, before I met my husband, I knew what type of wife I was going to be. I knew what I wanted out of my relationship long-term. And I knew I had to be someone different than what was shown to me throughout my childhood. And no shade to anybody who was not married in my life, but I also knew it's something I didn't want for my relationship in order to have a marriage. I knew I had to change what I was shown, right, on a behavior sense, right, single moms all over from family, from friends. I've seen it all. But what did I have to, who did I have to become in order to have a marriage, in order to be married? And I knew that prior to even finding my husband at that moment in time. We've been together come this year, 13, 13 years, like, <laughs> and that's been a long journey in itself, right? And, and even though I thought I knew what it took, it's still, it's still a life learning thing, right? So imagine where you are right now. Are you a mom? Are you a dad? Are you an aunt? Are you an uncle? Are you a business owner, right? What did it take to get to this moment right here? What were some of the past decisions you had to do? What were the some the characteristics and qualities you had to let go? What were some of the things and actions you had to take that felt a little uncomfortable, but you knew it would be in alignment of where you where you are now? That is the key to achieving any goal that you ever want in life. Take that, run with it. <laughs> let me know if it was helpful in the comment section because I want you guys to have this, right? Forget the New Year's re resolutions throw them away. Instead, create a theme for your life for the year. And I guarantee you, you will feel more accomplished than you ever have been in your entire life, right? Stop worrying about the pounds you need to lose and the money you need to make and the, you know, the money, the income and the lifestyle that you want. Stop thinking about that, right? Instead, who do you have to become to achieve it, right? Live up to the theme, but then change yourself slowly as you evolve. What would that person be doing? I'm telling you, this will be the game changer of your life. And you will be able to accomplish any goal that you set when you start with that one question. Who do I have to be when I achieve that goal? You're welcome. <laughs> I love you all so much. I hope this was helpful. This is going to be a different style of how I deliver content. I want to deliver more valuable for you. So please let me know. If this was valuable for you, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you have some questions, maybe that could be a content in the future. You guys do help me and you know I'm out there answering you guys. So I love you all. Continue designing your dreams into reality. I truly embody that mantra and I take it with me in hopes that you do design everything that you want because everything that's within you is already designed for you. It's only a matter of you becoming that person to achieve it. I love you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next, next episode. Bye.